I wanted to update you all on some more news out of EOS this week. Apparently, the resources in EOS have just got 99% cheaper. I wanted to understand what exactly that means and the implications of that. So I invited back onto the show Ash Oro. He is the co-founder of freedomproxy.org and he is also the host of EOS Radio. Welcome to the show, Ash. Hey, Naomi. Pleasure to be here. Tell me what does all of this mean and uh, especially for EOS users? Sure. So typically in EOS, if you want to use the network, you would need to buy EOS tokens and stake them. And that's how the blockchain protocol allocates resources, specifically uh, um, CPU and bandwidth. So if you need to, if, if you or your smart contract needs to do anything on the, in the EOS network, then you need to have resources allocated to you. But what happens in times of congestion or as EOS grows, it takes more and more resources to, to run your DAP or to use your, uh, to use all the DAPs that you would, maybe you like to go play games or something like that. Well, what has happened is the EOS community after about 10 months of discussion and development have created this thing, which we call the Rex, uh, or it's the resource exchange. And what this is, it's a smart contract decentralized exchange where people can lend their EOS tokens to without losing uh, ownership of them. And basically how this happens is just think about it as like a big community pool where if you're not using your the resources that are owned by you by owning the EOS token, you can offer them into this pool. And in return, people come to this pool and they can lease EOS. So no longer do they have to buy one EOS to get uh, CPU or network speeds, they can lease them from the community pool and the fees that they pay to lease that get uh, distributed to everyone that has offered their EOS resources into it. So it's a really good, safe, easy to understand way to uh, get some passive income on EOS tokens, which you're, you're not looking to sell because you're a long-term hodler, but you're also not needing to stake and claim those resources for yourself. That's a pretty interesting development there because I don't think we've ever really dealt with the idea of leasing things before. You know, we've had loans in the past. You have loans in Bitcoin or you have loans with different organizations like Salt Lending, for example. And so we understand that concept. But really, when you're getting into proof of stake, you kind of have a different use case for this currency. And so the idea of leasing the tokens just in order to uh, avail more of this, uh, this power, more of these resources is a pretty interesting uh, concept. It, it is. And it's in the name delegated proof of stake. You're able to delegate your rights away to someone else for a specific time and for a specific payment. You know, of now course, how is this different from the delegated proof of stake? Cause hasn't EOS always had this kind of a system? Like how yes. is the Rex different from this? Right. So up until, up until the Rex, it wasn't a community pool. There was no one place that you could go really to buy, to lease, excuse me, these resources. So you either had to do it peer to peer, say you had a, a, a very uh, expensive DAP, expensive meaning that it took a lot of CPU. Well, I could stake, I could delegate my EOS to you, and then that would tell the blockchain to offer you my resources. Or there were some exchanges, one in particular named Shintai, where you could go and they acted as a, as a third party exchange to match people who could uh, lease and the people who could, uh, you know, offer up their resources. But now what's happened is all of these were, were like centralized. Um, and now we have a, a decentralized smart contract that manages all these resources for us. So everyone now knows where to go to either offer their resources to make a dividend and you get paid every day or where to go to get to lease resources. And so it's, it's just a much more elegant and simple way to to efficiently allocate the, the system resources that are going to make EOS run. And, you know, you said 99% cheaper and that is true. And how we get to that number is with one EOS, you can lease over 2000 EOS worth of resources now. So the cost to run your DAP on EOS just became yet yeah, literally 99% cheaper than if you needed to actually buy and acquire those tokens yourself. And that's right. the leverage that you get. 
Yeah, that's right. That's the leverage you get. So all, all the leases are for uh, 30 days. So once you commit your EOS tokens, your unused EOS tokens to the Rex, uh, it's somebody's going to buy them. You know, somebody's going to lease them and you lock them up for 30 days. So the person, so if, if you were loaning your, your EOS tokens, I could come and the current rate is about one EOS will buy or lease for 30 days, 2,200 EOS worth of resources. So you would have needed to, to get the same amount of resources, you would have needed to purchase 2,200 EOS and stake it into your own account. Or you can spend one EOS as a DAP developer, for instance, to go out and have all these resources staked to your DAP. Interesting. I love the fact that before you had all these centralized institutions doing this and, and, and matchmaking there, and suddenly you have uh, the markets evolved and now we have this decentralized process, which I presume is safer for both the people who are putting in their money and, and borrowing the money there, uh, because you're not trusting this central party not to run away with your money, essentially. And, and even, even the third party exchanges like Shintai were running smart contracts as well. And so, you know, it wasn't like you were sending your tokens to Bitfinex or something. You were sending them into a contract that then delegated them to someone else, but it, it wasn't owned by one person. These were still multi-stigged accounts, so there was still safety there. But now we have the go-to one-stop shop for pe both people looking for a passive income on their EOS holdings and DAP developers and such who are looking for additional resources so that they don't have to spend an arm and a leg. Think about, it, think about it this way. It, let's say that your DAP was running at about 100 daily active users and you ran a promotion and all of a sudden you got 10,000 daily active users. Well, instead of having to go out into the marketplace and buy all that EOS, you could now just go lease it. Maybe it takes you 100 EOS to lease all the resources required for that spike. And then that's it. You know, you didn't have to go and add all of this, these assets onto your books, onto your balance sheet, because you temporarily needed additional resources. So it's interesting that you say that this is a one-stop shop, that we've kind of got this centralized hub of decentralization, uh, which is kind of interesting. Is there any risk with having most people going to this one single pool, like with the smart contract being hacked or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, there's always a risk that smart contracts are going to be hacked. But since this was in development for, you know, 10 months and EOS is only 11 months old, um, it, it had a lot of it had a lot of block producers helping design and write the code, as well as block one. You know, Dan Larimer and Brendan Bloomer. We all know about the four billion dollar ICO raise. They were also instrumental in writing this. But yeah, of of course, um, any smart contract could potentially be hacked, and that's the cool thing about EOS is that our community is very used to. Uh, setting up and using and expecting multi-signature contracts, multi-signature permissions on contracts. So even if something, even if someone could hack it, uh, they would have a very difficult time to to uh, to hack 15 out of 21 active block producers to sign and do anything malicious with that smart contract. That was going to lead me on to the next question. This idea that if it's becoming so cheap to rent mm -hmm. this power, is there a risk in making that uh, those resources so readily available? Perhaps the system could more easily be co-opted. Theoretically, someone could go in and let's say you wanted to just temporarily own all the resources in EOS. I mean, you could go and buy a whole bunch of resources from the Rex. And let's say you have to pay a lot of money. You know, your fees alone are, you know, let's say a million EOS. And it buys every EOS available in the Rex. I think there's probably about 50 million EOS staked and offered to the Rex at the moment, to give you an idea. Total market cap, total coins outstanding is about a billion. So we've got 50 million in the Rex. If somebody wanted to buy that many resources and they don't use them, well, that's just free passive income for the people who loaned into the Rex. If someone did want to buy that many resources, then they, they temporarily own those resources on the network and they can use them as they see fit for the duration of that loan, which is 30 days. Now, if they start using it in uh, malicious ways, or I'm not even sure what a malicious way it would be. Uh, Depends you know, on the definition of maliciousness. Yeah. yeah. But they're, they're taking temporary control over those resources. And, you know, I'm a free marketeer. I believe they should be able to use those resources however they would like. It was all allocated voluntarily. Um, we had someone at the very beginning of EOS. I don't know who it was, but they, they called themselves Block Twitter. 
and they were just spamming. They had a lot of EOS and they were just spamming note transactions with memos just all the time. And uh, they could do that because they own so many resources and you're not, if you own a lot of resources, you're not going to be throttled down because you, 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 you know, you're proportioned that percentage of the, uh, of the network. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see if it's hacked. We'll see if there are some uh, attack vectors that we haven't uncovered, but so far the Rex has been running for about a week and um, it's going very swimmingly. It is. Well, we'll have to uh, keep in touch and, and discuss how it's all going later on down the track and uh, if anything has changed. I know it's a little bit different than, say, like Ethereum, where resources are allocated based on um, the amount of transaction fee you're willing to pay. And so it's just a very different allocation method here in EOS where you can stake, but you can also get delegated. So yeah, again, we're just, uh, we're, we're experimenting. I love to see these different systems come out and, and compete. And I mean, we haven't seen competition and how all these things work ever because we've, you know, government's had a monopoly on the money supply. So mm. it's really interesting just to see how these things will play out. I, I definitely keep my eye on it and I appreciate you coming on and explaining it all to us. Yes, yeah, my pleasure. Thank you so much.